Good morning, it's Amanda. How are you doing? Today is the 12th of June 2020. Got the date right today. Although you cannot make up how bonkers the energy is at the moment because I have just been locked out of my um, emails and uh, had to reboot for some reason. No reason why, you know, the password wouldn't work. Um, and it's just reconfigured my Outlook account and it's come up, I mean, get this, in terms of time just being all over the place. You can't make this stuff up. It's come up with a reminder um, that I can snooze in five minutes if I wish to of the fact that I'm due at the Holiday Inn in Brooklyn, um, but it's 83 weeks overdue. <laughs> God, I just, I can't, this, this energy is just absolutely, if you haven't got a sense of humour, guys, at the moment, you're not going to get through this period that we're in, because, yes, according to good old Google, I am 83 weeks overdue from visiting uh, this lady at the Holiday Inn in Brooklyn. <laughs> um, I think I did go, was that where we did, the, was that where we did the workshop? I think that might be where we actually ended up when I came to New York two years ago. So, I mean, God knows, that's just flashed up as a reminder. Yeah, I'm 83 weeks overdue. Jeez. Ah, try and hold it together, Amanda. Trying to hold it together, guys, because <clears throat> it's just all getting a bit too much at the moment. I'm actually having this, I'm actually in this energy of like, stop the world, I want to get off. And I'm sure, I'm damn well sure that I'm not the only person out there feeling like this at the moment. Um, the world is bonkers. And I have just opened up my astrological diary for, um, I was actually trying to do some inner work, you know, and just, you know, forget all the emails that have to be answered. Just, you know, focus on yourself for a moment. So I had a little hour. And I thought I'll just have a look and feel into the solstice energies that are coming up next week. And I'm reading from, just to give them credit, the Astro Moon Diary 2020. It's brilliant, actually. I get this every single year. It's really, really good. And they, they um, write and summarise brilliantly what's going on in the sky. Now, again, I know I'm jumping ahead a week because we're not at summer solstice now. But, you know, time is not linear, guys, as I've just demonstrated. Um, and it is so perfect what is written here for what we're going through right now. But equally, it's going to be building over the next week. I think I'd just like to read it to you. Um, let me just read it. OK, so it says the sun moves into cancer. Solstice, by the way, is I think the 21st of June might be slightly different in terms of around the world. 20th, 21st of June um 20th of june it says here this is the chart for london the summer solstice chart for london anyway <clears throat> the sun moves into cancer the sign of the mother and brings to fruition the hidden potentials of the winter solstice just eight hours after the summer sol just eight hours after the summer solstice moment the sun is eclipsed by the new moon on the precise solstice degree, a true cardinal or turning point. Anyway, the bit that I feel is particularly relevant, we're getting to. Solar eclipses are powerful instigators of crisis and change. And this one occurring at one of the most powerful turning points of the year, especially so, it is intensified and stirred to action by Piscean Mars suggesting that it is, for example, idealistic fervour, false news or fears of toxic pollution that are reaching a crisis point. Anger and fear are likely to reach high tide and flood the airwaves. The aspect from Mars to Capricorn, Jupiter and Pluto will strengthen the arm of those working hard to impose order upon chaos. But cool detachment is called for. Saturn making an exploratory foray into ultra-rational Aquarius attempts to achieve this, but its message is not likely to be gratefully received. Passionate emotions often cannot hear the voice of reason, and Saturn's inconjunct aspect to the eclipse 
suggests that its offering of new paradigms, regulations or realities will not be readily accepted, especially by those who have powerful emotional ties to the past. But behind it all lies the unavoidable message of Taurian Uranus, that accepted material values must change. Perhaps a new Capricornian respect for Mother Nature and all things feminine is coming into being. It seems there are choices to be made. That really spoke to me today and it really felt as though it summed up this complete and utter roller coaster that we're all on. And this crescendo of chaos that seems to be arising at this moment in time. And I think we need to prepare ourselves for it's going to get more heightened as we go towards the solstice next week. So forewarned is forearmed. And I think we need to be doing everything we can to ground ourselves and protect our own energy at this time. I woke up today feeling really dizzy and really odd and I'm actually feeling OK now uh, ish. <laughs> but it was like, oh, my God, you know, maybe there's a problem again with blood pressure or something. Fortunately, there isn't. I'm OK. Um, but it feels energetic. Um, I'm anticipating that the Schumann, res the Schumann resonance is about to do something pretty wild over the next 24, 48 hours, but also all through next week. I think it's been very volatile, very up and down. The Schumann resonance re um, measures the frequency around Mother Earth. So when it starts to go into real peaks and um, highs and then lows, we feel it as empaths and as sensitives. We can't not because our feet are on the earth. So Mother Earth is absolutely doing this up and down movement. We are doing this up and down movement and we need to somehow find our core, uh, as I talked about in yesterday's video, and um, find our balance. I think in terms of colours, green is the colour that I would give you that feels as though it's very, very helpful at this moment in time. Um, because green is the colour of harmony and it's the colour of balance, but equally it's the colour of growth. And when you think about it, all of this turmoil and chaos that we've got going on in our world at the moment um, is will eventually help to bring about change. Change is also a green energy as well. Um, but yet you can't see it when you're in the eye of the storm. It just feels like complete chaos and pandemonium and, you know, headless chicken territory, which is where we all are. Um, it very much is a time it's like, can I just go and hide under the duvet for the next week? Well, no, you can't actually. You've got to turn up, show up and be present. That's why we're here. Um, so I would encourage you to work with the energy of green as a colour energy. Um, <clears throat> And what I, what I mean by that is maybe breathing in green, you know, doing some colour breathing with the colour with the colour green. Um, the one that I'm being drawn to that's on my desk at the moment is the Emerald Renewal and Recovery Spray. Um, I just am rather drawn to that very dark tone of green. But to be honest, I love I love all the tones of green at the moment. I can't get enough of the colour. So let's just spray this for one moment. Actually, this is perfect, Metatron is saying, because it's very grounding. Emerald is a very grounding energy. Yeah, because what we're after is grounded evolution, if that makes sense. Um, as a species at the moment, we're trying to run before we can walk. Um, some of the things that are happening are not happening via consultation or pulling different parties in together to hear and listen to what people's needs are. Um, it's just being forced through at this moment. So that doesn't really help anybody. And what it tends to do is it tends to inflame opposite camps. OK, so we need the change and the evolution that's happening to come in in a, in a steady, assured way but in a grounded way. Um, uh, and I don't know whether that's a bit of a you know, pipe dream at the moment because I can't feel that it's slowing down anytime soon. So you have to slow down. That's the point, okay? So if around you there is just this swirling energy um, which feels very chaotic and you can't keep up with what's going on, well, you need to be the one that actually slows down, okay? Um, breathe, meditate, 
journal. OK, all of these things are really important at the moment. I'm also being drawn to the Alta Major Chakra, um, which is behind the back of the neck and really wanting to work with that as well at the moment. I've done videos on this. If you Google Amanda Ellis Alta Major, you'll come up with a video I made a couple of years ago, which is a uh, meditation that takes you through balancing all of the upper um, chakras. And by that, I'm talking about from the throat up to the... Um, probably the, I can't remember, but I would imagine I took it up to Soul Star and Stella Gateway. Um, but again, let's just put a bit of teal, which always feels quite watery as well. Why do I say that? Because it always reminds me of the ocean. It's like this energy of the ocean. Um, which I did some meditation last night before I went to bed and, uh, I don't know whether I should say this really or not, but um, I've started, so I need to finish. Uh, um, I was asking Spirit with regards to second wave of virus. Is it, will it happen? And I did see a big wave coming in. And I think that's what we're also feeling at the moment, which is even those of us that are positive and try and put, you know, the smile on our face every day, it's it's bloody difficult at the moment. There's just so much happening out there. Um, and there's so much uncertainty, but we need to try and find the, the positives and the pluses in these challenges. So I'll give you an example, give you an example. Um, in the news today in the UK, um, one of the things they're talking about is how do we get the children back to school? So at the moment, I think the goalpost is September. Okay. Uh, now, whether that's all of the children in all of the year groups remains to be seen. But certainly the goal is to bring education back in September in a more substantial, meaningful uh, way within the mainstream, mainstream field. OK, i.e. going to a physical school. Uh, but I've also read today they're saying and if but if we but if we can't deliver that. It could be that February will be the next goalpost. February. So obviously some people are like, like, February, you know, and actually what it was described as in the in the article I was reading is this is an ice age that potentially is coming into our children's life in terms of education, i.e. there's a dearth of it because in the UK kids haven't been at school for months. Some have, you know, key worker children have and some classes are going back, but whole schools are not operating. So it referred to this ice age, you know, of education. I looked at that and I thought, no, it's, I heard straight away Metron say it's not an ice age. We are talking all the time about this new generation of children that we've got in our world and how special they are because they are and the spiritual gifts that they've got and the fact whether you call them, you know, diamond children, crystal children, whatever, it doesn't really matter. They're coming in with what we need for the future. Well, what I heard Metatron say is they need this time out. They need this time out. And I mean, in many ways, I've said this before on videos, I am the divine timing of what of the decision that we made. I just can't believe it looking back on it because we had one one daughter left in mainstream education. The other one has left it. She's older but we had one left in it and we made the decision to take her out of mainstream education about, um, well, her last day was, I think it was within the one week or so of when all of the children stopped going to school. So I'm almost sort of saying to Metatron, thank God, you know, thank you, because we're not in this. We're not, we're not even having to deal with any of <clears throat> what is out there <clears throat> for other people at the moment. And I'm sure it's really difficult if you're trying to hold down a nine to five job, maybe you're a single parent and suddenly you've got to homeschool your child. I know myself well enough to know, and I might get attacked for saying this, but hey, you can get attacked for anything at the moment. OK, so it's almost like, you know, I'm just going to do it. Um, I know myself well enough that if my daughter was still within the mainstream educational uh, arena, OK, and wasn't being homeschooled, uh, I know what would be happening, which is they would be getting 
a deluge of um, work to do from the school, which was already getting completely and utterly unbearable and un undoable just because of this sheer volume of it. Well, I know that that will have just been added to, you know, and I know I would have had a very stressed child. And I'm sure lots of other children very stressed because not only is the volume of work coming in just as great, but you haven't actually got the teaching capability, you know, in a classroom to help you. Um, and for many children, that's really, really stressful. For parents, it's really stressful because they're then trying to get up to speed with, you know, maths that you might not have done for decades, science that you haven't looked at for decades, and also trying to hold down a job. I know what I would have done is I would have given my child a break, okay? And I'd have said, just do what you can. But I certainly wouldn't have been there, you know, looking over her shoulder saying, you haven't done that piece. They, you know, that was due yesterday. So I think that, you know, it's just one example, you know, potentially education being on hold, ice age, it's what these kids need. They need a break. They need a break because actually some of what they're learning anyway within the traditional curriculum isn't actually what they need for when they go out there into the big wide world. OK, uh, not all of it, of course, but a lot of it, you know, you don't always need. Plus the fact what's also coming up is some of what needs to be on the curriculum needs to change. So but I, I just heard so clearly from Metatron, it's what they need. They need that room to breathe. They need that room to breathe. You know, so I certainly would not have been hot housing my child in this scenario that we're in now. I would have been allowing her space to also do some work. Absolutely. Try to, you know, keep your toe in the water, as it were, but equally explore other new avenues, other areas of interest and also find out about, well, who are you? What makes you tick? That's the opportunity that's here for our children now. So, um, yeah, feeling that quite strongly. So where are we at? We're at 16 minutes. We're on. A, we're at a Friday. Um, let's just pull a couple of cards and see where we're at. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm using this deck today. I'm using the Spirit Oracle deck by Tony Carmine Salerno. I've pulled some for myself, which I shall keep private, but um, let's just see what is out there for the collective. What guidance is there, please? Um, but yeah, so use the colour green to um, bring in the harmony, uh, the balance that's very needed. Um, take care of the altar major, the chakra at the back, which is trying to bring in the new energy, but can be a bit, you know, it feels a little bit woozy i would say uh i don't even know if there is there is such a word as woozy but you know um it's almost like our senses are being upgraded but it's like there's cotton wool it's like we can't quite hear the new frequency coming in yet but we will we can't quite quite see what we're about to see but but we will uh, we can't quite articulate or speak what we need to speak but we will it's all a bit foggy foggy would be a better word of a better way to describe it we're, we're wading through a bit of fog at the moment we're wading through a bit of fog we're definitely wading through a bit of collective fog i want to keep repeating that um you see fog fog as a um element also can be quite protective it can be quite protective it's almost, well, it is, it's like low cat cloud that sort of comes down. It can be, it can be protective. But equally, you don't drive in fog, do, do you? You try not to anyway. You don't go out on a bicycle ride in fog. So it's, again, it's this thing about just needing to slow down the pace a little bit over the weekend. Because I think the weekend is going to be inflammatory, you know, in the collective. So are you going to add more of that to the fire or are you just going to try and hold your peace and your stillness? We need to hold the peace and the stillness. Let's uh, see what cards we've got coming up for this weekend. divine will 
Mm, interesting. Um, thy will be done. I'm hearing the Prince song in my head. Thy will be done. Mm -hmm. I can no longer run. Brilliant song. Brilliant song. I think it's called Thy Will Be Done. Um, let me just double check. I want to read you the lyrics because they're spot on. I'm being told they are spot on. So yeah, um, Brooklyn, I'm obviously, you know, I'm sort of with you, even though I'm not with you. Love, right, okay, here's the lyrics. This is Prince, love thy will be done. Love thy will be done. I can no longer hide, I can no longer run. No longer can I resist your guiding light that gives me the power to keep up the fight. Love thy will be done. Since I have found you, my life has just begun. This is almost like an ode to God, to source to within you as well, your higher self. Um, and I see all of your creations as one, perfect complex, no one less beautiful or more special than the next. We are all blessed and so wise to accept, thy will be done. Love, thy will be done, and make me strive for the glorious and divine. I could be no more satisfied, even when there's no peace outside my window, there's peace inside. And that's why I no longer run. Love, thy will be done. Perfect. Thank you, Prince. I very much want to bring Prince through as soon as I can. I'm having a crazy week, as you know, and next week's probably going to be a bit bonkers as well. Uh, but then Prince is top of the list. That's our song for the weekend, guys. Prince, thy will be done. And as he says... Even when there's no peace outside my window, there's peace inside. And that's why I no longer run. Love, thy will be done. It's the cut, it's that. Okay, let's have one more card. For the weekend. Yeah, this one keeps wanting to come out. Um, I keep seeing this card today, Innocence. See, there's another song, Return to Innocence, Enigma. I've, I've done that many times though on video form. That's another great song. Return to Innocence. We need to start seeing this journey we're on through the eyes of our inner child, through the eyes of a child, our inner child as well. So if our inner child is wounded and doesn't want to look out the window at the, and might be actually feeling quite upset and afraid and fearful of what's going on out there, the chaos, reassure her that she's okay. Reassure him that he's okay. So also maybe some inner child work coming up to do as well. Um, but you know, this is, this is the passage that I read to you last week, um, from, uh, Matthew linking into seeing through the eyes of a child. That's where we need to get to as a world. And on the back of the card, I'll just read what it says. You, you see, it's purple. <laughs> see what Prince is doing here. Okay. Innocence, purity, joy. You are being encouraged to just be you, be a shining light for the world. Expect positive outcomes to flow from your honesty and pure intentions. So we need to hold the energy of innocence. Um, we need to hold the energy of the innocent child that comes into the world expecting it to be good. Um, why would it not be good? You know, um, the child has come from God. God has provided all. So the soul drops down into earth. And if it's lucky, it gets a mother and a father who look after it and... Um, soothe it and feed it and nurture it if you didn't get that then there is this blue purple indigo ray coming in i feel to our world at the moment which is also linked into the shadow by the way um where we're being asked to look at our wounds and i think there's a there's a lot of um wound playing out that we're seeing in the collective at the moment but yet, really, this is very inner work that needs to take place um, within ourself to just feel into our inner child, feel into our wounding um, and return to a place of innocence. 
as pulling in a child card. One of you sent me this deck. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name unless it's in the box. I get sent a lot of stuff, so thank you. Don't think you wrote, no. But anyway, um, it's a great deck in a child cards. And uh, you see again, look at this, look at this. I didn't, I'd forgotten it was purple. Look at this, purple. Purple indigo, I'm going to call it. It's an indigo energy. Okay, let's have a card for our inner child, shall we? Coming into this week of solstice. They're a bit big and a bit hard to shuffle. <laughs> let's give it a go there. It's almost like my hands suddenly feel like children's hands. You know, when a child is trying to get their hands around something that's too big. So perfect. One card, please, for our inner child. Um, came in upside down, or is the whole deck upside down? Okay, I think the whole deck might have been upside down, so I'm not going to read it upside down. The Guardian of Swords. Let me just show you the card, and then I'll need to look at it myself to be able to tune into it. So you tune into it first. Okay, the Guardian of Swords. Bring your inner child out to see, to look at that card and see what you get. Now let's see what I get. Uh, I'm just looking for the inner child spray. got one even hmm, interesting not sure I've even got one out I mean that says it all doesn't it really that's how little attention I'm giving to my inner child whoops okay noted the inner child spray is rose and I don't have one to show you mm, okay I'll get one um we have a sword going through the rose we have a warrior angel. We have a warrior angel um, who's taken off his helmet so that the child can see who is actually the, uh, the guardian. So almost as though, I feel as though some of our inner, ch some of our inner child children haven't fully known who their guardian was, whether that's Metatron, whether it's any of the other archangels, whether it's Christ, whoever, you know, everyone's different. And it's as though spirit are want literally they're taking off this piece of armour to reveal, I've always been here for you. I've always been here for you. I've always been around you. Um, this is who I am. So it seems to be something to do with the inner child um, getting to know more about their guardian. Now, you might say, but hold on a minute, aren't children the ones that are supposed to be closer to spirit and they see spirit, so that doesn't make sense. The truth is that many people, when they're children, they get frightened. Frightened isn't quite the right word. It, no, frightened's not the right word at all. What happens is children see spirit and then grown-ups tell them, don't be so stupid. Don't be so stupid. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's nothing. It's just a shadow on the wall. It's this, it's that. No, they see spirits, okay? It's adults that tell them, no, you don't, okay? So what happens, of course, is the child closes down. The child closes down. It, re it, it, it re realises it's not acceptable in society to talk about angels and fairies and all this type of stuff, you know? No, everyone thinks I'm, you know, bonkers. No one believes me. Everyone's looking down at me because I'm thinking that or feeling that, even though I know it to be true. And so you close down your gifts, you go into the biggest fog, actually. You know, you close down the the clairvoyance, the clairsentience, all of it. So it feels as though there's an awakening happening again where, you know, we're multidimensional souls at the end of the day. We are evolving and we are ascending and we're aware of our adult self that is doing that, you know, and where we're trying to head towards and what we're doing. But yet um, the child within you is also developing with you as well. Okay, they don't stay the same. If they stayed the same, you'd always have that wounded child curled up in the fetal position that never recovered 
for example, from the trauma that they had when they were young. You, they can heal. They can heal when they are within you because they are an aspect of you. So there seems to be something that's coming up for healing whereby the inner child is being able to um, be acknowledged. It's almost like you're, you're, you're needing to have a conversation with him or her, which acknowledges, I know you saw, I know you heard. Let's have a conversation about that. Let's remember that. Let's remember that. Let's document that. You know, show me what you saw, because, you know, whether you're 40, 50, 60, you forget, you forget. And sometimes it can be something very simple that triggers the memory. I remember being in a car, I don't know, a few years ago, and a song came on the radio, which I hadn't heard for about 45 years. And it was a song that I had as a 45 single. And I used to play over and over again, and it was um, The Banner Man. The banner man. <clears throat> you see, my throat's going as soon as I say it. The thing is, I, my, my adult memory is I love that song. It takes me back to my childhood. The banner man, I love that song. When I heard it for the first time, 45 years later, I was driving the car and I literally, I burst into tears. It was like this emotion just swept in from nowhere. And it was like, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? It was like my adult said, what the hell was that? Well, this is the weekend to go back and find what that was about. I'm just giving it as an example, okay? Um, so, yeah. What didn't you want to see? What didn't you want to hear? Why weren't you heard? You know, whatever the thing is. This is also coming up at the moment. At the, so can you see this is very inner. It's very deep. It's very private, actually. So... It's like this push-pull because there's very private, sacred, deep inner work that's being requested, actually, by your higher self. But yet we look out there and it's just like blinking chaos. And we're getting distracted, of course, by all of that as well. So you either add to it, you either add to that or be centred and still, which actually does add to that. Because then you're bringing your stillness not just into yourself everybody is collected, connected to everybody else, that stillness, that peace, that healing that you find then flows out because it can't not do to what's happening out there. So it helps the collective as well. But you're doing it for yourself. Um, let me just read a couple of words, if I can find it quickly, from this book. The Guardian of Swords. So it's Archangel Michael. Um, the Archangel Michael has always been considered to be the captain of Christ's armies, the commander of the heavenly hosts. He was almost certainly the angel with the drawn sword who appeared to Joshua before the Battle of Jericho. Um, in Revelation, he was said to lead thousands of angels with his flaming sword in the battle between Satan and the demons. Michael is the celestial personification of spiritual might and willpower. If you need to protect your mind from negative thoughts and confusion, a prayer to an angel under Michael's auspices will comfort you. He's about courage. Michael's name actually means who is like God. Um, when Michael makes his presence known to you, you may be weary from one of life's many battles. Many of us are weary at the moment. Rekindle your passion to live according to the highest truth possible. The spirit of honesty and righteousness is upon you. Remember, oh, wow, I can't believe this next line. You know, we had that card about divine will and we've just had Prince, thy will be done. Listen to this last paragraph. Remember Jesus's words in the Garden of Geth Gethsemane shortly before his crucifixion. Not my will, but thy will be done. During a contemplative interlude, your own faith and belief in higher powers can be restored. Walk the path of life with humility, confidence and a heart of gold and noble intentions. Wow, thy will be done. Allow the divine to guide us through this next week. Allow the divine to guide us through this chaos. Allow the divine to guide you through your own journey to heal your wounds. 
thy will be done. Back to Prince, love, thy will be done, and make me strive for the glorious and divine. I could be no more satisfied, even when there's no peace outside my window, there's peace inside. And that's why I no longer run. Love, thy will be done. I'm not running from myself. I'm not running from anything. I am being present. I am at one with all aspects of myself. So we have the energy of Archangel Michael, we have the energy of Archangel Metatron, we have the energy of Christ. They will be done. Much love. I'm going to uh, take the weekend off, so I shall see you on Monday. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.